So we're continuing the vibes right about now. 2019 is coming towards the end, and now it's 2020. New sounds are on the block. New MCs are on the block. 2020. New dubs are on the block. New artists are on the block. There's so much going on. New kids is on the block. It's crazy. <laughs> How's your position for 2020 right about now? And how do you see sound system culture? Because, like I said, we're going to go back and forth on certain things. And there, there's so much we missed out. You know, I think this is this is one this is, this is one of the, the main situations about having such legendary people. I mean, you cannot talk the things in one interview because <laughs> there's just so down. much going on right about now but i want to just break it down to 2019 and into 2020 what is the future not only for you but for sound system culture as an industry well, well for me personally which i can speak of the best more the same thing man like it's like every time i feel like i've done a lot I start thinking about what I haven't done and then be like, I ain't done anything. You know, but I, 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 you know, I'm also brought back to reality, you know, when I got friends and like fans that be like, yo, you think they're ruined? You think I shot? Ray and Tay, like, I don't let that get to my head, but I, at least, I, that's, that's, that's more of like, um, just, that's like a little bit of gratification mm -hmm. to know that. Okay, I'm reaching them. I'm reaching them. Mm -hmm. well, and, I, and I stay humble that I ain't reached nowhere yet. Like, y'all yeah. ain't seen anything yet. Because I'm not on a plane every week. I'm not turning down plane flights. Mm -hmm. All the plane flights, all the, all the out-of-town dates and all those nice things, I'm taking them all right now. When, but, until I got to start turning them down, mm -hmm. that's when I know it's where it should be. But the, f the future on a whole, 2019, I think was a very good look for sound system culture on a whole. Yeah. I just yeah. think that th there's a lot of things going on. And, and I think it ended, I think it's having a nice little ending at the end. Like, I, to be honest, I think that um, the way that, the, um, even though I don't, I'm not into it, but to show you like how I am as a person, I'm nothing, mm -hmm. I'm not into the Red Bull. I haven't even fully watched it. But I think this year, it helped more because it was in Jamaica and they it was more of a clash of vibe. And even and I, I even the, some of the clips I saw it, I saw them saying they ain't doing it. They're not clashing the okay. right way. And I that really made me go, Yeah, these are one of the first set of people that's letting them know that yeah, y'all not doing this is this is how it should be done. So I think that kinda helped. If they keep Red Bull at the end of the year like this every year, I think it, it might always help because it's such a hype around it. Even though I wouldn't, it's not something that I inspire to do, or I think that's how you rate if a selector or a sound bad. But if they keep that every year at the end of the year, I, I what was your problem with Red Bull? What I don't like about it, uh, what I, what was my issue this year? Well, this year on the whole, because I um. I think this one we can we can start this one on the whole Red Bull situation. Is is that something that you would not go into or not participate in? What what no, is the I kind of whole do, situation that, about it? The way how it like I've I've actually had selective friends involved and like yeah I would definitely be involved with that. Uh -huh. It's so it's 100%. like it's so much hype behind it and it's like but I'm wondering like would I be able to just play that background role I don't think I could I would like have I'll be wanting to lead out I want to keep talking and you know mm -hmm. but um yes yeah, it's, it's definitely that platform is huge and it's like it's so hype it's so much hype around it and um yes yeah, it's, it's cool but but you know um how do you feel about this year was as far as my problem with it sorry too much soca mm -hmm. I'm not a big soca fan and then from judging how they play, Soka didn't get much forward yeah. anyway. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, what we're talking, about, what we're going to go into now, just for a brief moment, is like that whole situation which, with the Red Bull culture clash, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. A lot of people bonfire on me like, yo, I, oh yeah, Tarbo. But oh yeah, some of my some of my hardcore sound clash friends love it, and I understand why they do. It's just that I don't judge it about. I don't try to compare it. I, I just don't like when people. Watch that and then be like, yo, why such as it's like, whoa, 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 let's not make the comparison. Let's not ask why it's not like that. Red Bull has millions of dollars to put behind that. That's why. And, and, and you can is that something right that is that something that you would be fully a part of? Because I think again, like when I look at somebody like you now, 
and look at the future of dancehall music and sound system culture and dub plate cutting and branding and everything what you're doing it's, it it, it kind of looks like it's going to be inevitable that you may get those opportunities to get that yeah, bag. like i said like there's certain platforms and opportunity that I wouldn't consider a sound or a sound man a bad sound from it. But if given the opportunity, of course I'm taking it. That's mm -hmm. one. The cruise, the uh, you know, the uh, jam rock cruise, like cruise. Those, those platforms are humongous. Like, look how much people. Like, if you as a person that love to perform, which believe it or not, as a DJ, that's what you are. Mm -hmm. The more, the merrier. Who wants to perform in front of a little bit of people? <laughs> you have some selectors that like little crowds because that's the only crowd they can only perform in. Mm -hmm. I like big crowds of people that don't know me. How would you I found that it got harder when the more people know you. It's how, easier when people don't know you. How would you perform at Jamrock Cruise? Is that another place where you think that you could shut down? Shut down completely. But I think I would deal with Jamrock Cruise wicked because of my natural American upbringing also. Remember, mm -hmm. I was born and raised in America. So uh, where a lot of the people, that's when that cruise also too. The neutrals are American also. Mm -hmm. Or English or non-Caribbean. A lot of the neutral people, that's on that boat. And that's where a lot of the people attack. Like if you look at Mighty Crown, and that's what they, it just what, you know, you see that's what they attack. If you can attack the neutral people, then... You can win that. And I'm quite sure I can get those people in the palm of my hand. Especially that amount of people. It's easier to sway that amount of people than it is a small <laughs> amount of people. You know, Definitely. people like, people are sheep. People, most human beings like to be told what to do. And that's the type of crowd where they want to be told what to do. Yeah, man. I, I, I would definitely take those opportunities. For the price of dub play cutting is out there kind of crazy right now. Yeah, you know, um, we see a lot of people on social media, sound systems on social media. Boy, the artists are charged that amount of money, and we're not paid that amount of money, etc. etc. But at the same time, the artists, them who they're calling out who are charging that amount of money, are not winning clashes. So, wow. do we where's the argument point in terms of okay, let, let's put it out there. The, the shaggy and the popcorn and this and the other charging this amount of money for a certain amount of dub plates. But I've never heard of a popcorn winner clash or a shaggy winner clash. Well, in your situation right about now, because you're literally leading and getting to that level right about now, how do you see the dub plate cutting level? What, what is your whole scenario about the thing? I say cut what you can. That's it's always been the business, has always been that. It, I'm quite sure it, at first it wasn't a money thing. It was started off as clout. If you got a name, you can get a tune. If you ain't got no name, it's going to be harder to get a tune. Then it became money. If you got your money, you get a tune. If you don't got no big money, you don't get a tune. I look at it the same way. If an artist, and don't get me wrong, I go through it just like everybody else. Artists call a price on me. I'll complain about I'll bother to it to amongst my selective friends. I might even write a little joke about it on Facebook, but in reality, I'm not bothered that much to where it's, it's business. It's, uh, it's, it's capitalism. It's whatever an artist want to charge. If they're charging too much or they're charging what you don't want to pay, there's, there's no artist where you don't have to go around. There's artists that I don't have in my box that I won't even point out because people don't even realize I don't have the artist. What's the most expensive dub plate you've cut? Um, I don't say the artist. Or don't say the song. Just say the price that you paid for that particular song. And was it worth it? I think uh, the most expensive dub in our box was like twenty five hundred. I think twenty. It's a combination. Yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> Hundred percent worth it. It separated. It was a. It was a tune that made people say, "Oh, wow!" Like it's two separate songs. One was was a high price by itself. It doesn't cost more than the other one, but the other one is a combination. So naturally, but the one song by itself, the price of that one song by itself, mm -hmm. like, like I mean, 
I mean, I I don't even have a problem saying what it is. Like the, one of the most expensive dubs was Vice Versa Love. That's why you don't hear a lot of sounds yeah. playing it. Was what he charged for it. Mm -hmm. What he charged for it. And like, if it was just up to me by myself, I wouldn't have it. But when he said blah blah blah, and then it was like, Nah, man, we don't want that. And somebody in the crew said, No, it's worth three of them. It's like how much he went for one. Five hundred. That's three Barrington Levy. This is worth three Barrington Levy. Hmm. This one, he said, think about it. This one Barrington Levy is worth three Barrington Levy because this one Barrington Levy can separate your sound from others. And it was like, one Barrington Levy is five hundred. He want fifteen hundred for this one. Get it? If it was up to me, we wouldn't have got it because I'd rather take three more of them. Got the one band to leave me. Sound systems inside the UK. Okay. You're inside the UK right about now, and I'm not even gonna lie. The amount of love that people are showing you right about now, you've you've brought. Uh, I honestly believe you brought a new energy to sound system culture. I've not seen anybody go all over the place between <laughs> um, coming from New Jersey landing inside the UK and not just landing inside the UK and just sitting down in one spot. You're up and down the whole place, right? Yeah. So that you're in, you're here now, then you're going over there to Europe. Your social media is so present out there. Yeah. You're King Shine. You've done the, 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 the fight club. Yeah. You have the situation that's coming up right about now with Soul Supreme, which we're going to have a talk about. Yeah. I think this is the moment right about now where we talk about how do you be so relevant? How do you make yourself so consistent in a market and an industry that seems to be very dominated by the dinosaurs where you hashtag yourself the dinosaur killer? How have you made yourself so relevant right about now and keep that consistency? I think the first thing where people get blinded by more than anything is I actually play good. That's number one. Because anybody could talk. Mm -hmm. Anybody could this, this, and this. It just happened that I put the cart before the horse. I did all the talking first. But that's because I knew I had the ability to back it up. So, but the first thing that I do that people don't realize is I, I, I play good. I, when, I, when I talk up big, the biggest mouth that I put out, the biggest talking that I talk, I back it up. Win, lose, or draw, I back it up. So that's kind of the first thing. People know, okay, he talks too much, but that last dance he played, oh, he played wicked. Hmm. Yo, he talked too much, but when he clashed, oh, yo, he said that. So that's number one, backing it up. Number two is not being scared. You got to know that, okay, I could take a clash with at ease. And maybe a sound call me that's not quite at ease, who's two, three levels down from at ease. Yo, Jimmy, yo, I have my money, I want to try off. I want to let them song that we're out there, I want to take a dance with you. Where a normal sound would think, well, I'm just going to clash at ease. Because if I went, then if I went against at ease, then I could relax and then I could pick and choose and then all the money going to. It don't work like that. I'm going to take this dance with at ease. And I'm going to take this dance with the smaller sound. That's not at ease. So if I come and I clash at ease and I win, lose, or draw, regardless, I still got to clash. You're only as good as your last. That's mm -hmm. what everybody, you know that in sports, anything yeah. competitive. Pe most people would tell you, but you're only as good as your last. When in reality, that's only until you build up equity. You're only as good as your last when you ain't anybody. When you're nobody, you're only as good as your last. Mm -hmm. Until you go out there and then you make a, a stamp and make people know that, okay, he ain't win his last one, but he won three in a row before that. You know what I mean? Or like, yo, he won his he lost his last three clashes, but yo, he won five in a row before that. So I'm going to go and see. see mm -hmm. Maybe he going to win this next one. It's like you got to stay active. That's number two. You activity. It's Nothing beats active. activity. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I don't care who you are. And don't, don't try to compare yourself and be like, well, uh, Bayside to see you only clash once. You're not Bayside to see. 
There's so many different dynamics that go into those big sounds. Don't ever compare yourself to them. You're not them. You're not them. You're not them. You're not them. They're, these sounds have legacy. You don't have a legacy. You're trying to build one. I, Base Odyssey is not trying to build a legacy right now. It's built. It's, it's a machine where they can introduce select the hype as the newest member of Base Odyssey UK and you were bust. And these same people that see you every day would start going, yo, select the hype by the man, you know. All because <laughs> what? You're part of a legacy now. It's something that a legacy is out there. I never compare myself or try to put myself on the level of thinking, um, I can do what they do or get away what they get away. Mm. They have a legacy already. So I know I'm currently building mine. Like, wh what makes me know that I'm building it the right way is the people that don't, I know for sure downright hate me and don't like me mm -hmm. when they start running out of excuses. So your, your main answer to the question is build a legacy. It's building how a legacy. Do you, it's how like, do you do it? How do you make it happen? Is just basically gotta, respecting it. And then, but... But you got to respect the game also. Like, don't think that... Like, a lot of dudes win a specific clash and think, oh, I made it now. You got to capitalize off of every mm -hmm. clash. I can go out and beat... Um, uh, I go out, so if I go out and rematch Addies and I win, but then I go and take six months off, mm -hmm. that, that, that win is going to rub off. I don't care who you... I've seen it with the best of them. From Addies to LP, the Earth Ruler, the Gyro, to this one, to that one. To that. I've seen all of them take on a big win and relax, and then that big win fade away. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to myself, if it can happen to the big song, them will have a legacy and a real roaring fan base. It definitely can happen to me. So just activity. Because it, it ain't, I don't care who you is, it's not going to last forever. You know, it ain't going to last forever.